Whatever happened to the basement office? You remember that show? If you haven't heard of it, at one point in time, it was the number one UFO show on the internet. It garnered millions of views for every video. And I personally, I remember at the time, would look forward to every video that came out. Well, today, we're going to take a deep dive to where that show went. What happened? You see, it was on the New York Post YouTube channel. And it was hosted by New York Post journalist Stephen Greenstreet. It was also hosted by Nick Pope. Who's Nick Pope? He was the former UK's Ministry of Defense sort of head UFO researcher, let's say. Um, I've actually interviewed him on this channel for Vetted. And um, I just remember the show. I love it. And we're going to take a deep dive into just what happened to the show. So it's going to be in three parts. All right. Part one is going to be basically just looking at the basement office, what we miss about it, talking about that. Part two is going to be what changed, what happened to make the show disappear. And number three, just my thoughts on the whole thing because I got some ideas. All right, so stick around. Let's jump into this video, all right? Now, this is part two of a video I made a couple days ago. I'll put a link to part one in the description. You technically don't need to see part one to understand part two here, but if you do want the full story, there you go. So let's dive in. If you're new to the channel and you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, y'all. We put out a new video every day, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. And please hit that like button, y'all. I've worked really hard on this video, and that'll help me out a lot. And, of course, I guess if you only like the video, right? <laughs> or maybe just for working hard, y'all. Um, and, of course, comment down below what you think about this. Uh, There's probably going to be a lot of comments, y'all, because this is uh, quite a ride. I have a lot of links, a lot of stuff to show y'all. So let's, let's just dive in. Again, I'll put the uh, links in the description to everything, as I always do. So you can check all of this out on your own and verify it. All right, let's just dive in here. So how did this begin for me? Well, basically, I was on this uh, Facebook group, which, again, if you want to go to part one, you can learn more about that Facebook group. Um, and I ran into Stephen Greenstreet. And I asked him, Stephen, what are you covering now day-to-day -day at the New York Post? Or is covering the UFO topic your day-to-day -day with the Post? He wrote, UFOs take up maybe 5 to 10% of my current day-to-day -day assigned responsibilities at the Post. I say, cool, thanks for responding. Um, and to be honest, I did ask him for an interview or conversation or however you want to put it after that. It's just as a screenshot. So it got me thinking, wow, you only spend 5 to 10% on UFOs? Because at one time, he spent all his time, right? He was running the basement office. The show went on for a couple years. And because I see his stuff on Twitter and it's all UFOs. I mean, that, that's it. Look at that. Currently debunking UFOs from a basement office. I mean, no. That's, that's not happening. That show does not exist anymore. Um, but so, you know, regardless of what he's working on, I just thought, man, his Twitter is just filled with, um, with all kinds of... I don't know why this isn't, let me see if that all, just, it's all UFO stuff, y'all. That, that's it. Uh, everything is UFO related. Um, well, that is some ad or something. Um, yeah, it's all just UFO related, right? Just UFOs, UFOs, UFOs. Um, I mean, look at that, right? From UFOs. I just thought, man, you spend so much time on UFOs. Yeah, I'm clearly still interested in this. Right. So look, let's take a look at what made the basement office so so special. Right. This is from one of their videos. So we're just going to watch uh, the intro here. Let's uh, enough of me blabbing. Here we go. While most UFO sightings involve witnesses seeing a strange light, a disc, a triangle, there are some cases that go far beyond just seeing an unidentified object. There are many documented cases that involve seeing the occupants of that UFO, beings, humanoids. Some witnesses claim aliens. Did you see the eyes? What did they look like? They were um, big, like that. Today we will look at historical evidence of close encounters of the third kind. Welcome to the basement office.
Come on, y'all. You can dance. It's okay. Yeah, dude. Great show. Right? Look, let's see. So obviously. Show. Nick. Look, look, see? Nick Pope, Stephen Greenstreet, right? This was an amazing show. And I miss it. I remember that intro would come on. It was like, yeah, all right. Let's go. I mean, look at that set, y'all. What a great set. You know what I mean? Great lighting. Got Nick Pope here. Just got the 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 you know the tie on. We're just we're just gonna let loose down here in the basement and t- and talk about some of this stuff, right? Let me give you guys another example of why the basement office was great. Let me move my keyboard out of the way here. I've got some notes down here, so if you see me reaching down, that's what I'm doing. I have a lot of notes. I want to make sure I do this right. Look, Stephen is known for, to be honest with you. He would always ask great questions in his interviews on the basement office. Here's a good example. What I'm trying to wrap my brain around is how does one come to that conclusion? I understand theory and uh, theoretical physics and math on paper, but beyond videos, photos, eyewitnesses, radar, how, how else are you studying UFOs? Well, that's a great question. You study it any way you can. Uh, it, it's very much like uh, recreating the scene of an accident, okay? So you may uh, come up to an accident and you see two cars collided, but you don't know the circumstances in which the accident occurred. So you start collecting the evidence. You start talking to eyewitnesses. You get the telemetry of, from, the, from the vehicle itself and the accelerometers. Then what you do is you find some cameras that were on the street corner that actually saw the cars five seconds before they hit. I got you it. talk to people that... I'm sorry to interrupt you, but in, yeah. in your analogy... You said you go, the vehicle itself is part of the evidence. You go up to it, you look at it, you examine it. Was that happening with a tip? Uh, Wow. Great question. I got to be careful how how I answer this. Um, Look at that. That's an example of Stephen Greenstreet asking a great question because he was good at the show. Y'all the basement office was amazing. It was awesome. And he clearly asked a great question. And for those of you that don't know that's watching it, that's uh, ex, it says ex-Pentagon official Luis Elizondo, right? He ran the ATIP program. We'll get into more of that later. Uh, that name is going to become part of this story as well, Luis Elizondo. Now, another thing about the basement office that was great was the reporting. Not only did he ask great questions, but he was a great reporter. Check out this report that he did. Again, it involves Luis Elizondo. ...from Pentagon spokesman Chris Sherwood, where he confirmed that the Pentagon UFO program, called the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, or ATIP, did research and investigate unidentified aerial phenomena, UAP. UAP is the government's way of saying UFOs, and this was something they had never said before. This unprecedented admission by the government, essentially, yes, we investigate UFOs, sent shockwaves around the world, and even the History Channel deemed it a historical moment. However, in December 2019, Pentagon spokesperson Susan Goff completely walked back that shocking admission to the Post, saying that actually, ATIP had nothing to do with UAP. So within the span of just a few months, the Pentagon officially said, yes, ATIP investigated UFOs. No, actually, no, it didn't investigate UFOs at all. Then in May of this year, the Pentagon issued a third statement, which contradicts their previous two. Via Goff, a statement says that ATIP did in fact, among other things, allow for research drawn from a wide variety of sources including reports of UAPs. So the Pentagon has now had three different positions regarding their UFO program. Yes, we did investigate UFOs. No, actually, wait, no, we didn't investigate UFOs at all. And now, okay, maybe we kind of investigated UFOs. (laughs) Confusing? Well, it doesn't end there. The Pentagon's continually amended statements are not isolated to just their now infamous UFO program, but also to the man who claims he ran the program, 
Lou Elizondo has spent the last four years publicly claiming he was in charge of chasing UFOs for the Pentagon's ATIP program. The Pentagon, however, does not support his claims. They say, nope. In May 2019, spokesperson Chris Sherwood denied Elizondo was involved with the UFO program, telling the Post, quote, Mr. Elizondo had no responsibilities with regard to the ATIP program. Over a series of phone calls and emails, Sherwood said he was trying to provide me with documentation that would support that statement on Elizondo. When the documentation never came, I pressed him further, essentially asking, why the delay? What's, what's going on over there? Seemingly frustrated, he replied and said, I am not really happy with the way they're handling this story. Referring to higher ups on how they were handling the Pentagon stance on Elizondo. Sherwood stopped communicating with me shortly after this. Instead, spokesperson Susan Goff took up the reins. In June 2019, she issued a second, slightly amended statement regarding Elizondo. Quote, Elizondo did not have any assigned responsibilities for ATIP. The word assigned had now been added to the statement. When I spoke with a spokesperson for the Defense Intelligence Agency, that person confirmed, yes, Lou Elizondo was involved with transferring ATIP out of DIA to another office. I asked Goff and Sherwood, hey, the DIA says, yes, Lou was involved, at least in transferring a tip from one office to the next. Is that not at least an one assigned responsibility? I was then told, we don't disagree with that. What DIA says is true. I then said, well, then would you like to amend your statement that he had no assigned responsibilities? They said the statement still stands. And to this day, years later, after revelations and new information has been revealed, they are still releasing the same statement. Elizondo did not have any assigned responsibilities for a tip. And look at that. Again, I'm going to put links to all of this so you can check it out. It's a longer video. But look at that reporting. Great reporting by Stephen Greenstreet. Right? And clearly, you can tell that getting information from the Pentagon and the government can't always trust what they're saying. They play a lot of games. Remember this clip in this video because I'm going to reference it down the line. Now, let's move into part two of this video. What changed with Steve Green Street? What happened? Because one day, the Basement Office episodes just stopped coming. Let's take a look at this one comment here about this video. Look at that top comment. Excellent reporting. You continue to remain true to real journalism. Never change. In times like these, we need regular The Basement Office episodes. The Basement Office is one of, if not the most interesting and incredible shows on the subject, in my opinion, it takes me sometimes hours to watch one episode, looking things up, etc. Stephen and Mr. Pope are an amazing team. And there's more, y'all. It just keeps going and going and going and going. But then something happened. He did this report. It's called The UFO Lie. The Shocking Truth of Pentagon's OSAP Program. It's a long video. I'm going to show a short clip here. Again, I'll put links to everything. But this is basically how he feels. And regarding myself and all the Basement Office episodes I've made about ATIP and Elizondo, I was apparently wrong. It wasn't intentional. But in an honest attempt to report the truth about the Pentagon UFO program, I too feel like I was purposely misled. As for Elizondo, he, along with other former members of Tom DeLonge's To The Stars Academy, have been lobbying Congress to spend more money on UFOs. 
They say the original New York Times article continues to influence congressional leaders, since many of the paranormal aspects weren't included in that story. Chris Mellon, the guy who once stood in front of a gigantic photo of a blurry party balloon, admits that telling Congress about OSAP would be counterproductive. Their efforts appear to have paid off. Bipartisan congressional leaders like Senators Kristen Gillibrand and Marco Rubio helped create a new UFO program at the Pentagon. The new program is called the Airborne Object Identification and Management Synchronization Group. And another domino falls. I actually didn't remember the name of that UFO office group. Um, see, great reporting. Um, it's an interesting video, to be honest with you, this video, right? Um, but he basically started to come around to a different understanding of Luis Elizondo. Because Stephen Greenstreet had Luis Elizondo on his podcast. You saw that clip of the interview I showed of him asking a great question, right? Um, and they had a relationship. There was two parts to that, right? And then it just changed for him. Now, I heard stories behind the scenes that... Um, I even saw it myself. I saw the videos aren't available anymore because it was on a channel called like Lou Reviews or something like that. Um, so I can't show them to you. Um, but basically, Stephen Greenstreet went on this interview and they, you know, he basically like he got this phone call. They were on this phone call. Um, I think that might have actually been on a Black Vault interview. Uh, but, you know, he's on this phone call and they're talking about money. And that got him kind of upset. You know, and to him, I mean, he said he had the keys to the kingdom. They were ready to hand him like a big television show. He could have had anything he wanted. But then he started to see that it was just about the money. At least that's what he said. Right. Now, he went on another interview. The Lou Reviews, that that one, that's going to come into play in here in just a second. Um, the show called Lou Reviews um, with this guy. I don't know too much about the drama or whatever. But he goes on the show and that host asks him like, hey, do you beat women and, you know, some other nonsense? I don't know. It, it was uncalled for. OK, to be fair to Stephen Greenstreet, it was like an unfair question, uncalled for, loaded, completely loaded. And then it turns out that Lou was prompted to ask that question um, to Stephen Greenstreet. Now, I'm not talking about Luis Elizondo. I'm talking about, this guy's name is also Lou, just happens to be Lou as well. Um and he had a UFO show. And coincidentally, one of the people that used to host that show with him was this woman named UFO Jane. She was a researcher and nothing. Great person. I interviewed her on the Lone Star Plate, which is a show I had before. Now, granted, I didn't know about any of this uh, drama, but I remember asking her kind of about the show and this and that. And she was very hesitant about it. And at that time, she was like, oh, I'm getting out of this. I'm taking a break. And I was like, what? You know, I'm interviewing you for my other podcast, which I didn't cover UFO stuff. It was the first time I'd ever interviewed anyone about UFOs. And guess who recommended UFO Jane to me? Just as a coincidence, Nick Pope. We reached out to try to get Nick Pope on the Lone Star Plate. And he was like, oh, you're in Texas? UFO Jane, she's in Texas. You know, you do her. So it's funny how that all comes full circle. But so he does this show, right? And they kind of bombard him. They bombard Stephen Greenstreet. And so it turns out that the reason that host of that UFO show, who, again, who's also Lou, Lou number two, we'll call him, I guess. Luis Elizondo supposedly told him to ask that about Stephen Greenstreet, right, to make him look bad. And you might think, oh, Luis Elizondo would never do anything like that. I don't know. Oh, look, I don't know Luis Elizondo at all. Um, in fact, I do like the guy. I do kind of support what he's doing. I've kind of gone back and forth on him. I'm not going to lie because that's how it is with just some people in this community you kind of just go back and forth. I don't know, but the people aren't really so important to me as the phenomena is, you know what I mean? I don't want to let people come in and bring all the drama to the phenomena. You know, I'm not trying to rhyme all this. I promise y'all. Uh, but you know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to let that happen. So, but it becomes part of it this story in this video and so yeah you know there's a little bit of truth maybe potentially to what um happened to steven 
And here we go. Let me show you guys this. I found this. Uh, now this is confirmed. This is a text message from this Lou person, okay, that runs this Lou Reviews show, this UFO show. And they deleted all their stuff because they also flipped and became like anti Luis Elizondo, you know, and UFOs and everything. You know what I mean? As a whole. Um, and they're constantly trolling on Twitter and whatever. I see it and I'm just like, God, get away from that stuff. I'm muting so many people. Just stay away from that stuff. Um, but that guy sends a message to Luis Elizondo. And Luis Elizondo responds. Luis Elizondo's in the white here. And this is the host of the show. Again, his name is also Lou. So, yes, it's very confusing. So he basically, which is quite telling of this anyway, he says, hey, Lou, I cannot thank you enough for taking the time to join us on our show today. Apparently, Luis Elizondo was a guest on the show. Again, you won't find those videos. They're deleted. As always, unless, you know what, take the back. You know, if there's somebody in the comments that can find those and put links to them, you know, go at it. Um, I cannot thank you enough for taking the time to join our show today. As always, it is an absolute pleasure to have you. I know your time is valuable and I'm extremely grateful that you chose to spend your afternoon with us. I couldn't help but notice that something may have been bothering you prior to the start of the show. I'm sure you have been extremely busy and possibly exhausted with everything going on. Please let me know if I had done anything to add to your stress as this is the last thing I'd want to do. We have your back and offer any help to you in all efforts in which we can provide valuable contributions. Don't hesitate. Ask and feel free to use us as a tool in your tool belt. I don't like that, right? I don't like that stuff. Again, that, that's one of those things I've talked about on this channel before of like, you know, you start to become friends with these people in the UFO community and now you want to retain that access so you won't say anything. You know, again, I'm here for the phenomena. I'm not here for the players in the phenomena. Okay, great. I respect them. Don't wish them any ill will. I, you know, I kind of keep everyone at a distance and just want to report on this, right? Provide daily doses of UFO stuff, right? Every day. Your daily fix, if you will. So anyway, I don't know, you know, sending a message like that, like these UFO shows get used, right? Is that what he's saying? Like use us. I mean, anyway. And then the second part of his message, he says, and if it's any consolation, I think those five criminals you mentioned are not being listened to on any substantive, substantive level. It's just a handful of empty souls screaming to be heard. So you may be thinking, what's he talking about? Well, this is Luis Elizondo's response. Thank you, hermano. Truly, honestly, I'm tired of all the BS with the felon five. Green Street, Stephen Green Street, who this video is about. Greer, Stephen Greer. Okay, you may know him. John Greenwald Jr., uh, third phase and all other bullshit artists. It's very sad that this important topic has been relegated to fringe by all these hucksters and mentally unstable individuals. It's an absolute crime to humanity. They have been allowed to pilfer the pockets of people who have sacrificed so much. I guess I'm a bit jaded these days. I take on people in our lifeboat only to catch them drilling holes in the hole and then writing their, their hand. Um, since my dad and I was on your show, they even attacked him for being part of the Bay of Pigs. Maybe my grandfather was right. They don't deserve our efforts. Okay, done bitching. Need a good mojito and I will feel better. Now, look, to be fair to, you know, look, Stephen Greenstreet, th this, this went public. Stephen Greenstreet sees this and he's like, you know, you add that with the phone call and this and that. I think he gets upset. I think that's what happens. I think Stephen Greenstreet gets upset, right? Kind of personal, right? Feels personal. Um, and I get it, you know, a little bit, but to be fair to Luis Elizondo, it's not cool to leak these, you know, text messages out, you know, and again, th these are public y'all. I, I found a bunch of them. You can search for it on Twitter there. Th this is posted in a bazillion tweets. Well, maybe not a bazillion, but it's out there. You can find it. Um, and I, yeah, I don't, you know, people are allowed to kick off steam. So, I mean, honestly, I read that from Luis Elizondo, and I don't think it's that bad, if I'm being fair. Like, that's like a fair thing you say to someone you trust. You know, you're sending a text message. I don't think that's, so what? He called somebody mentally unstable. I mean, who cares? You know, people are allowed to, like, throw out some stuff. You know, look, he's saying he's having a bad day, just bitching, just wants mojito. Maybe he's frustrated, right? The guy just wants to, 
you know, do good, right? And I can see it from both sides, but I can also see why Stephen Greenstreet is upset. He may start to think, oh, this guy's full of BS. He's lying about UFOs. He's like, therefore, he's a bad person, right? And Luis Elizondo maybe took it too far himself as well, got hurt personally and started acting out, right? But that doesn't take away from what's true underneath, right? That Luis Elizondo was in a tip, investigated UFOs, right? Maybe there's some details that are this, that, the other. Okay, but right there, are, there is this underlying truth. I think it's just for me personally and for people watching and, and most people that understand the story, I think you can just see that there's both men got their personal emotions involved, whether they want to admit it or not. And I'm look, I'm not perfect either. I do things as well, you know, I got my own stuff. I'm, I'm not perfect. I also make mistakes. We, it's, it's human nature, okay, to do, to do these things. But I think that's what happened, right? And again, Lou's calling him a criminal, right? Stephen Greenstreet, right? And they're trying to like, okay, I get it. And maybe you don't want anything to do with Stephen or with Luis Elizondo, Stephen Greenstreet. I get that. I get that. Now, check this out. This is a message I got about when I said I was going to do a video on you, Stephen. So I'm trying to be fair here, Stephen, to make this video for you. I hope you see this, Mr. Greenstreet. Again, please, followers, vetters, share this. Let's spread this. I want Mr. Greenstreet to see this. This guy sent me this. Look at this, Alex DeLarge. Mate, seriously, if you're going to do a hit piece on Green Street, let me know. I can help you. Right? Hey, thanks for reaching out. I don't do hit pieces. That's what I said. I think you may have the wrong idea about what kind of content I make and what kind of person I am. Thanks for your interest, though. Have a good night. I was trying to be diplomatic there. If, if I, I'm going to show you in a second here all the messages he sent me before that, all this different stuff, and do your show like this, and then do this, and then do that, and do that, and then do a hit piece. And like, what are you talking Hit piece? It's perfect, and, and look at his response. It's perfectly okay to do a hit piece on Green Street. You will score a lot of cred in the UFO community. That's not what I'm trying to do, y'all. That's not my goal. My goal isn't to get cred in the UFO community. My goal has nothing to do with the UFO community. Nothing against the UFO community. I'm not here for the UFO community. I'm here for what's flying around in the skies. That's what I want to know about. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to get involved in the drama of the UFO community. And this, like, yes, I love the people involved in the UFO community. I want people in the UFO community to watch the show and be a part of everything. But come on, I'm not here to do things like this to get cred in the UFO community. But that's what how a lot of people operate on Twitter, man. And Stephen Greenstreet is he's got some enemies as well coming after him. We have to realize that. Okay. But Stephen Greenstreet is not perfect. I've made a video about him, about trolling and how he changed because he also does the same thing. Some of his videos, the thumbnails he uses, he, he, he does a report and then he throws in jabs when he does it, right? So like I get people are upset, but you know, so I'm proud of myself. He says, look at this. Basically all the key people like Lou, Nolan, Coltart, Dick Butt, Bigelow crew, et cetera, all have him on block. Wow, he really just wrote Dick Butt. Uh, okay. Richard Butt is the guy's name. Should go for a long read on his reply tweets. You'll find him abusing everyone. Abusing, whatever. But Alex, no offense, look at you, man. You're abusive, right? Look how you are. Like, and I tell him, just please respect my space. I answered you politely. My previous comment still stands. He said, thank you. You're getting confused, mate. I said, cool. You told me your opinion. I said, no, thank you. Leave it, please. I'm being ultra polite. I will block you in two seconds and move on. He said, mate, block me. I don't give a shit. Please, people like you come and go all the time. You're not important to the conversation. Didn't realize how arrogant you were. I'm arrogant. Now, let me show you all the messages he sent. So I started it right here, right? Well, look at this. Look at all this stuff he sends me. You see all this? And see, originally he had sent me this one thing right here. And I said, that's an interesting idea. Thanks for the suggestion, right? I'm being cool. If anyone knows me, that's my favorite emoji I send. But then he just starts to hit me. And I'm just, you know, just too much, y'all. 
tell who hit P and he's just telling me what to do. Um, and I blocked him. I, look, I just don't have time for that. Okay. But I want to be fair in this video to Steven. I want to be fair to what's going on. Because again, I'm not involved with the drone. I don't care about the players. And you may be asking, Patrick, what are you doing? Why are you making this video? You'll see. Let's get to the end. All right. Right here, this is an example of kind of where Steven started to go. Just take this different turn that was just interesting, in my opinion. And in fact, in one of the memos, it was a follow-up to Secretary of Defense Mattis. His abrupt departure from the department was labeled with a question mark a counterintelligence alarm, meaning right. Luis Elizondo had high clearance. He knew a lot of national security related secrets. So let's forget about UFOs for a second. That was this potentially a threat? So he, all these circumstances led into even the secretary of defense, from what I can tell here, concerned over his departure. In Reed's second memo, it says, and I'll quote, the letter is not consistent with the first resignation letter Mr. Elizondo personally handed his supervisor. After my phone call with Mr. Elizondo, in which he said he had been secretly working for the secretary, I checked with two senior officials that have knowledge of special programs. Our collective assessment was that Mr. Elizondo's claims were not credible, and the letter, meaning the second resignation letter, was not worthy of the secretary's personal attention. And another thing that's important to note is, you know, this is all in reaction to um, that big New York Times article in December 2017 that claimed Lou Elizondo was the director of a Pentagon UFO program and that he ran this program for many years. You know, your work and in investigation, my reporting for the New York Post has revealed that most uh, that story is riddled with errors and factual inaccuracies, that there's no evidence to support much of Elizondo's claims. Um, but it's interesting to see this memo, um, for example, right here where, you know, they discuss, you know, that, hey, it's been claim he's claiming that he was the program manager for investigating UFOs and other aerial threats. So look, there's more to this and I'll share it, but I just wanted to show that as an example of like this, now what his angle is, right? He is just anti Luis Elizondo, anti, just like this small group of people, right? He started to, reporting on Skinwalker Ranch and all this stuff. And he just got this small group and he spends all 100% of his time on Twitter dedicated to that, even though five to 10% of his job is investigating UFOs, right? And the basement office is gone, y'all. That content that he does now doesn't get the same viewership. So I guarantee you the New York Post was like, we're moving you on to something else, right? Who knows what he's working on? He's probably supporting other people in their, what they're doing. Um, I don't know, right? Um, but he's taken this sort of angle to do this stuff, and I get it. And he just keeps, like, hammering it home, and it's like, move on, dude. It's like your whole show is just saying the same thing over again, in my opinion. Just trying to be fair here, you know? I'd be like if every video vetted, I just talked about the same story every day. That, that's kind of what it's like. I think people are seeing that from you. I'm just trying to be fair here. That's just how I think a lot of people see it. Now, a lot of people have far more, you know, whatever beliefs. And granted, to be, you know, fair, Stephen, you have been, you know, you do put a lot, of, a lot of tweets that aren't very nice. And look, I'm not perfect either. I've responded to one of your tweets kind of like, you know, with a little sauce myself, because I just thought, and then I just stepped away because I thought, dude, why do you keep tweeting that stuff? And I hit you. With, I remember you were like, oh, why is News Nation, um, you know, uh, covering UFOs only, right? It's the UFO channel, whatever. And I thought, dude, the New York Post, hello, do you see what they cover? Like, and I went straight to their YouTube channel, and found like one of their top videos and shared it to you. Like, here's the hard hitting coverage you're talking about right of the new york post like it just it just some of your stuff it didn't make sense right and again you you are very aggressive you don't just report the facts you always have to add these personal attacks in there and i think a lot of people see that man okay whether you want to admit it or not you got a little saucy you got a little edge to you and i get it a few people thought it was clever so you want to move with that but it's not really working out for you right because think of the crowd that that's for 
It's a small little group of people that you're playing for. It's a stage with, you got five people in the audience, you know? I don't know what happened. Like, you cleared the room, right? And you're kind of just with some of the other trolls that are just like, is that really the kind of stuff? You say you're reporting, and I get it. You do throw out some cool stuff that I want to see, you know, even recently. But it always there's always this other element to it that a lot of people don't watch, man, who would if you came at it more neutral. Let that personal stuff go because that's what this video is about for me. Is to convince you, man. Because look at this. This is you talking about Leslie Keene and the article she wrote, right? The famous New York Times article. And something you're kind of upset at her about. Check this out. And she replied that her specific goal with that article was to give UFOs credibility. So she avoided reporting on some things. I chose not to focus on it because the angle that I was taking in my reporting was to try to get credibility for the subject. And I knew that that was not the way to go. That was not the first step in terms of getting people to accept this. So an author of the original New York Times article, the article that was the first domino to fall in all of this, says she wrote the article with a specific angle in mind. Get people to accept UFOs as real. That sounds like the goal of an activist, not a journalist. But I see where she's coming from, because could you imagine if that first New York Times article had talked about werewolves and poltergeists and giant dino beavers? It would have been laughed at and ridiculed and used as a prime example of the government wasting taxpayer money. But because all of that wasn't mentioned, and only unidentified flying objects were, that New York Times article continues to validate UFOs with not just your average citizen, but also with members of Congress. Since the New York... So... I got one more clip to show here um, in a second. But... You see, he's criticizing Leslie Kane for having an angle in her reporting. Well, as I just explained before that clip, that's kind of how a lot of people feel about Stephen Greenstreet, right? And if you're watching this, Stephen, um, for you, right? Like, that's how it seems. Like, there is this angle of, right, not just the facts, that you're coming at it emotionally. So what does well, so what happens? People just don't even want to listen, man. They just shut off. Right? If someone stops you on the street to give you some information, but they scream at you, you call your names first or whatever, just act kind of crazy. You're just like, okay, I'm I'm, I'm gonna get out of that. Yeah, you know, didn't need that. And even if these other people are doing it, ignore it. That person that sent me that stuff to make a hit piece about you, look, I was honest, I showed that to you. Right? What did I do? I blocked him. Moved on. Just move on from it, man. That's what we need. This community could use you, man. The people, just humanity in the sense that you do great reporting. You ask great questions. You make great content. Right? You don't need to add that personal angle. Because the basement office never had any of that. Good or bad. You were fun. It was fun to watch it. You were in a good mood. You're very bitter. The lighting's different. It's dark. You're alone in the darkness, in the black, right? Kind of just standing there. And I'm just saying, it's all subliminal in a lot of ways, right? And I think, come back. Bring the basement office back, man. That's what this video is about. And I'm speaking from the heart this entire time. I haven't had a script. I had some notes of just like, you know, what each clip was, just so you see. Like, that's it, convo with John and Steven, right? Like, and let me bring that up again, by the way. You know, in that video, y'all so easy to accept the facts of the reporting from the Pentagon, right? And that memo. But you were, before in your reporting, you questioned the Pentagon because it gave you different stuff, right? And it's not, you can't, which shows you what you can't always trust what you get from them in those documents, but y'all are so ready to admit that those were real. 
right? What about the Harry Reid letter for Luis Elizondo saying that he did run the program? All right, just things to consider. I'm just saying. And I think, um, for me, I don't really care what the truth is. I just want it. Again, I have no skin in the game for Luis Elizondo. I have nothing against him. I have nothing for him. I have nothing. I don't know him. Would I love to interview him and have a conversation? Of course. Doesn't mean I wouldn't ask the questions that I want. I don't have to trust someone or not trust someone to interview them. I don't know most of the people that I've interviewed. I'm meeting them for the first time. Is it really right? Just have a conversation. Right? So, but what does that mean moving forward and what kind of content I make and what I speak of? Man, I think a lot of us just want to know what's going on. A lot of us aren't involved in the drama, the day-to-day that happens on Twitter and Reddit and all this stuff. Most people don't care about that. I'm only in it because I do this daily and it's my job. Otherwise, I would not be in there, but I do it for the people. So that y'all watching, you vetters and other people, you don't have to do that. I'll show you that stuff and the stuff that kind of bubbles at the top that I think is worth looking at. But a lot of it is drama, you know. I, it, it, trust me, it's, I'm taking a bullet here to, to sift through that stuff. Um, I wish I didn't have to, but it's there. So my plea is just to Stephen Green Street, bring back the basement office, but with a fresh perspective, a new look, ready to attack this. That's your pitch to the New York Post. Call it the rooftop office. I don't know. I say you just call it the basement office again, rebooted, right? Rooftop office, you say, you know, I'm getting an overview now. Yeah, I got the whole picture, right? Let's look down on this or whatever. Just reboot the basement office. Bring Nick Pope back, man. We would love to see that. There's a lot to cover. Y'all could catch up on a lot. You'd have a lot of videos to do, right? Look at this again, but forget the personal stuff, just the facts, right? Go dragnet on us. Just the facts, ma'am. And look, forget me, right? I'm a nobody. I've made mistakes. And I've reached out to Stephen Green Street over the course of X amount of time since I found out about him through the basement office and whatever. When I tried to get him as, on an interview on the Lone Star Plate, and I never heard back. And I was kind of upset with him, to be honest with you, there for a minute, if I'm being honest. I think I even seen a, sent a message saying I'm upset man. And I've lashed out myself. Been my, you know, set, you know, it happens. Everyone sends a tweet or says something. I mean, we're not, nobody's perfect. Right. But let's be real. You kind of live that day to day on Twitter. Like that's your whole goal every day. It's almost every day. But I will say, I'm happy to see that you and Nick Pope are still friends. That's cool. I, I mean that loyalty is important. It's cool to see Nick you know, he probably can relate to what you went through, but I guarantee you, Nick would tell you the same thing. Hey man, let your emotions go. You know, maybe, yeah, maybe that is true, man. Maybe you are hanging on to that a little too much, you know, cover some stuff because let's be real, Steven, there's no way that we could say there is nothing to look into. There is stuff worth investigating. We don't know everything that's flying through the skies. No one has the answer one way or the other. Now, I'm not saying they're aliens. I'm not saying they're not. Do I personally think we got some craft in something? Yeah, I do, but intuition, I don't have any evidence. But I definitely think at minimum, it's worth investigating, which is why the basement office would be great to come back. And I know a lot of people, hopefully, they could put some of their stuff aside and maybe you've done some stuff that they just can't let go. Okay, whatever. Again, I don't tie the personal stuff to it. If all you did on Twitter was complain, but your reporting was neutral, then that wouldn't be such a big deal to be honest, but you eat it, but it seeps into your videos and stuff. It's very trolly. That's the video I made before about you a few months ago. It was just very trolly. And it's just like, dude, let it go, man. Come on. We need you, man. So look, this video has gone on long enough. I apologize. I'm going to end this on a positive note, man. And I hope again, if I've said anything that upset you or done anything, I apologize. I mean that. I'd love to tell you in person, I would. We do an interview with Zoom, I'll tell you face to face. Um, you know. So please come on the show. We'd love to have you here. And if not, please bring back the basement office. Report on it in a neutral way so a lot of us could have you. Because again, you would be a good ally. You do good at what you do. But the way you're doing it now, man, uh, just a lot of people just aren't supporting it. Clearly. I mean, let's be real. You know.
So, um, here's the video I'm going to end on. This is Stephen Greenstreet with his own experience of seeing a UFO. And listen to how joyful he is and talking about this and what it is and right. Like, this is the Stephen Greenstreet we need back, y'all. This was late, you know, later at night. It was either some kind of dirigible, some balloon. I don't think it could have been though, because the wind was zipping this way and it was flying through the it's flying through the wind. The wind's going this way and it was flying this way. And it wasn't changing direction like this. But yeah. 2003, what is that? 7, 17, 19 years ago. <laughs> Jesus Christ, 19 years ago. <laughs> so 19 years ago, bam, right there. And look, I reserve the right here to say, of course, uh, there may be more to the story that I don't know. Stuff behind the scenes, whatever. I get that. But that what does shouldn't stop Stephen Greenstreet from, right, professionally starting this show again and reporting on what's happening in the community, right? coming at it from a fresh, neutral perspective again, and just reporting on what's happening, right? So again, that's my video. I hope y'all um, enjoyed the video. Again, I'll put a link to part one. If you watched this far, my goodness, thank you so much. Do appreciate the support. A like would be awesome. And of course, cannot wait to read the comments here. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll have to correct a few things. I don't know, I may have op kicked open a hornet's nest. I don't know. Um, my whole goal is literally just to get the basement office rebooted, man, with Stephen Greenstreet uh, is a fresh, you know, perspective. And if there's more to the story, more that needs to be told, then come on and tell it, Stephen. Uh, you're, you're welcome here. You know, be respectful, open, whatever we need to do to make it happen, you know, to just have a conversation, you know, just dude to dude here. So let me know. Let us know. Uh, if not, good luck. And um, here's to a fresh nice hopeful 2024 20, okay um all right y'all as always remember every day's a gift y'all peace